Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with the Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about the difference between BMR, RMR, as well as the other factors influencing metabolism. We're gonna cover some myths about metabolism, and then because I know a lot of you guys are using this video to study, I'm gonna do a pop quiz at the end, so if you stick around to the end of the video, we'll give you a quiz. All right, let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so to start off, metabolism is basically how we break down what we eat and turn it into energy. Let's just use this pie chart as a basic example of the breakdown of metabolic rate. So this will vary person to person, but on average, basal metabolic rate makes up about 65 to 70% of your total daily energy expenditure. So the full pie chart would be how many calories you're burning in an entire day. And for the average person, that might be around 2000 calories. So if we think about 70% of that, that's gonna be about 1400 calories from that blue section over there, and that's the basal metabolic rate. And the two other main factors would be physical activity and the thermic effect of food in the red and the green. So looking at a chart like this, you may be a little bit confused because you see BMR, but where's RMR? So let's talk about that. So when we're in a lab, we can test metabolic rate. We would usually use something like a metabolic cart, which is measuring oxygen versus carbon dioxide. And by basically breathing into a tube and having the metabolic cart analyze that oxygen versus carbon dioxide, it can tell you about how many calories you would be burning over the course of 24 hours. Now, depending on the conditions in which you did the test, it's going to either give you your basal metabolic rate or your resting metabolic rate. And there's not much difference between the two. So if you did that test with the breathing tube early in the morning after fasting for 12 plus hours, that's really gonna be quantifying your basal metabolic rate. And it's really just the calories that you would be burning in a completely rested state for 24 hours. Another way to do the same test would be to do it in the afternoon, a few hours after eating, and that would give you resting metabolic rate. So it's really similar. So in general, basal metabolic rate is about five to 10% lower than resting metabolic rate. Resting metabolic rate, because it's done in the afternoon with not quite as much of a fasted state, it includes a little bit of the thermic effect of food and because you've been moving throughout the day and using your muscles, they're not gonna be at complete rest and that's gonna factor in and make that number just a little bit higher. So overall, it's not like one is better than the other. It's just a little bit different. And typically that resting metabolic rate will be about five, 10, maybe even 20% higher depending upon the conditions of that test versus a fully fasted basal metabolic rate test. All right, so now let's cover a couple myths about metabolic rate and metabolism. So the first myth is that eating hot peppers or tea or some type of supplement is going to significantly increase your metabolic rate. And that's not true. Most teas and most supplements and hot peppers really don't significantly increase your metabolic rate. Really the only supplement that significantly increases your metabolic rate is caffeine. And even with 100 to 200 plus milligrams of caffeine, you're talking about an increase of maybe 40 to 50 calories per day. So caffeine supplementation may slightly increase your metabolic rate, but compared to the 1800 calories of your basal metabolic rate, for example, an extra 50 from caffeine, probably not that significant. Myth number two is that thin people typically have higher metabolic rates. And this is not necessarily true either. Metabolic rate is actually most significantly correlated with body weight and organ size. So bigger individuals typically do have higher metabolic rates. When we look at what actually makes up basal metabolic rate, about two thirds of that is from organs. Your organs take by far the majority of that metabolic rate up. The other one third of metabolic rate is split between muscle metabolism and fat metabolism. One kilogram of fat burns about five calories per day, whereas one kilogram of muscle burns about 13 calories per day. So if we look at those two, muscle actually burns a lot more calories and contributes more significantly to your metabolic rate, about 20-ish percent of your total metabolic rate, whereas fat typically makes up a little bit less, maybe around 10 to 15% of your basal metabolic rate. And that leads us into myth number three, that adding muscle mass significantly increases your metabolic rate. Now, there's some truth to this, but we have to actually quantify this. But let's just say they do add five pounds or two kilograms of muscle mass. What is that gonna do to their metabolism? Well, we just said that muscle burns about 13 calories per kilogram. So adding two kilograms of muscle mass to their frame 
increase their metabolic rate by around 25 to 26 calories and that's about it. So not to say that that's not significant, 26 calories a day adds up over many days, uh, but it's not vastly changing your metabolism to put on a few pounds. That said, whenever you gain weight, you do add size overall. So let's just say you add 20 pounds to your frame, that includes muscle mass, organ growth, skin, bone, everything that, that's gained. That 20 pounds is gonna be about an extra 200 calories on your basal metabolic rate. So overall, as a rule of thumb, adding about one pound of body mass adds about 10 calories to your basal metabolic rate. And that does vary a little bit, but that's just a good rule of thumb. So 20 extra pounds on your frame, roughly about 200 extra calories per day that you would burn. So overall, resistance training and aerobic training doesn't significantly change your metabolic rate day to day, but it does each day add to your physical activity energy expenditure. So doing, for example, one hour of moderate intensity activity typically can add around 500 calories to that day's energy expenditure. So it would be added into that physical activity portion of the pie chart and overall increase your total daily energy expenditure by 500 calories. But the next day, you're kind of back to that baseline basal metabolic rate. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the pop quiz. So over six months, a football player gains eight pounds and begins to exercise about one hour a day with moderate intensity exercise. Compared to before exercising, before gaining weight, how much would you expect his basal metabolic rate to increase? So in this case, his basal metabolic rate would probably increase around 80 calories per day. The eight pounds that he gained would roughly equate to about a 10 calorie per day increase in metabolism, which would equate to 80 extra calories per day on his metabolic rate. Question number two is how much would you expect his total daily energy expenditure to increase? And to answer this question, we need to account for the moderate intensity exercise, which would add about 500 calories per day and the 80 calories per day that would be from his increased weight. And in combination, that would be about an extra 580 calories of total daily energy expenditure per day. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe so you don't miss future videos. If you do have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.